Siamo ospiti degli stabilimenti Marcegaglia di Ravenna per effettuare un esperimento. Un large diesel truck like this one emits a large amount of air pollution when it drives. We want to compare the amount of air pollution this heavy duty diesel truck generates when its engine is running with the amount of air pollution that a cigarette generates when a person smokes it in a room. Now we can't test this truck out here in the open, so what we're going to do is move it to a place where we can attach a hose to its exhaust pipe. Then we can attach the other end of this hose to a small office room and measure just how much air pollution this truck produces in that room. That's our plan, so let's try it out. Adesso vorremmo farvi vedere il metodo che utilizzeremo. Now we've moved the truck next to this small building and I'll show you the method we will use to measure the air pollution from the truck. Here is the computer and the equipment and you can see the end of the hose from the truck's exhaust tailpipe in the window at my right. We want to compare the air pollution in this room produced by the truck and also by a cigarette in micrograms per cubic meter and we want to show it on this computer screen. This instrument is an optical particle counter attached to this computer which can show the results on the computer screen. The instrument has a small pump inside that sends the particles into a chamber where they are counted one by one. Then they are converted to their proper mass units and reported in micrograms per cubic meter of PM 2.5 and PM 10. As it measures the concentrations, this instrument stores them in its internal memory, and then the data that's stored in the memory can be downloaded through a cable to a PC where we can display it on a graph, and this will allow us to compare the amount of pollution caused by the truck with the amount of pollution caused by a cigarette in this room. We ran the truck for eight minutes with the exhaust from this 450 horsepower truck going through the exhaust hose into this small office room with the door closed. Now we open the door to clear out the air and get the room ready for the next experiment. Instead of the truck, this time we will ask a smoker to enter the room close the door, and smoke just two cigarettes, one after the other. Here we see the results on the PC screen, and we can compare the particle emissions from the truck with the particle emissions from the cigarettes. The first two peaks were caused by the truck, first when the truck was started and tested, and then when the driver revved up the truck and ran it for eight minutes. The upper black line represents particulate PM10 mass concentrations. The red line shows the PM2.5 concentrations. And the blue line at the bottom shows the PM1 values. After eight minutes, the engine was stopped. And we then opened the door to clean out the air of the office so it could reach the background concentrations. At this point, the smoker lit a cigarette. And you can see the particle concentrations jumped to very high levels. To summarize, both the truck and the cigarette generated air pollution for eight minutes, but the cigarette peak was much bigger than the peak caused by the truck. Comparing the truck and the cigarette, the PM2.5 peak from the cigarettes actually was six times the peak caused by the truck. And the PM10 peak from the cigarettes was four times the peak from the truck. Here we are at the National Cancer Institute in Milan. And we've just seen that the amount of fine particulate air pollution exposure produced by just two cigarettes 
was six times the amount of air pollution exposure generated by a 450 horsepower engine of a tractor trailer truck, the same giant 18 wheeler trucks we often see on roadways. Some smokers justify their smoking habit by claiming that a cigarette is so small that it is not important compared to the air pollution produced by congested roadways. But this is not true. In our studies, we have measured the amount of air pollution produced by big cars, big motorbikes, both diesel and gasoline powered, but none of these vehicles produced as much air pollution exposure as cigarettes. A recent U.S. published study showed that a person's exposure to fine particles outdoors on the sidewalk of a busy California highway was much less than if a person smoked just one cigarette near them on the sidewalk of the same highway. These extraordinary findings demonstrate that the claim by some smokers that cigarettes are not as dangerous to health as traffic in a congested city has little basis. We do not wish to downplay the risk caused by urban air pollution, but we want to emphasize that smoking is not only dangerous to the smoker, but it is also harmful to other persons near the smoker, whether they are indoors or outdoors.